When it comes to deep space objects, I photographed galaxies, nebulae, and the open star clusters thus far. However, there's one final category that I'm trying out for the first time, a globular star cluster. I got a head start on some new data a couple nights ago, and tonight I'll be adding additional data to the project. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I continue to collect my first light on Messier 15. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. Messier 15 is a globular star cluster located in the constellation of Pegasus at a distance of 35,700 light years away from Earth. It was first discovered by Jean Dominique Maraldi in 1746 and included into the Messier catalog in 1764. M15 is one of the most densely packed globular star clusters in the Milky Way galaxy. Its core has undergone a contraction known as core collapse, and it has a central density cusp with an enormous number of stars surrounding what may be a central black hole. Home to over 100,000 stars, M15 is known for containing a variety of stars, including 112 variable stars and 8 pulsars. At an estimated 12.5 billion years old, M15 is one of the oldest globular clusters. So here's a rundown of the equipment I'll be using for tonight's imaging session. I'll be using the Orion Eon 130ED, my largest triplet apochromatic refractor telescope. And for imaging, I'll be using a one-shot color CMOS camera in the form of the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro. And of course, as usual, this will all be mounted on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG mount. And to help maintain those natural star colors, as well as minimize the light pollution, I'll be using the Optolong L Pro broadband light pollution filter. So with all that being said, let's head outside take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of Messier 15. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've completed all of my setup procedures for my equipment and my imaging session for Messier 15 is now currently in progress. So you can see M15 right in the center of the frame. And it's just really incredible to see all of these tiny stars condensed into one singular point. I think that's just really spectacular. So since I'm pretty new to photographing globular clusters, I was playing around a little bit with the exposure time, and I decided to do a series of one-minute exposures for tonight's session. And this is the same thing I did 
two nights ago, last Sunday. Because I believe that if I go any higher than that, then I run the risk of potentially overexposing the core and blowing out those finer details. So I believe that using one minute exposures is the name of the game when it comes to globular clusters. So last Sunday, I was only able to capture about an hour's worth of integration time before clouds came in to pretty much shut me down. So tonight, I'm hoping to get at least three hours of data, hopefully more. If I can get some more, I'll count that as extra credit. And another cool thing I learned about when I was doing some research on M15 if you're able to do a deep exposure on globular clusters, you can potentially reveal some hidden details that you may not have seen before. So in the case of M15, if you're able to do a deep exposure on this, you can pull out what's known as the integrated flux nebula, which surrounds the cluster. So the integrated flux nebula, or IFN, is a wispy nebulosity, and a popular IFN region is in the M81, M82 galaxy region. So that's Bode's galaxy and the Cigar galaxy, respectively. Now, obviously, I don't expect to pull out any IFN with a few hours of data I'm getting tonight. However, it is something I'd like to look into as a future improvement for this subject. But if you are interested in seeing what the IFN looks like around M15, Mr. Antoine from Galactic Hunter was able to soak in 15 hours of data for M15, and he created a phenomenal image. So if you're interested in seeing how he did that, I placed a link to his video in the description box down below, so be sure to check that out. So yeah, apart from that, everything seems to be going pretty smoothly so far. So as I mentioned before, I'll be taking as many one-minute exposures as I can tonight, and I'll continue to monitor the imaging session and see how the night progresses. When I saw the first image of M15 show up on my screen, and I saw all of those tiny stars so close together, it reminded me of something that was said by the late astronomer, Dr. Carl Sagan. He said, we are all made of star stuff. And it's true. Hydrogen, helium, nitrogen, all of the elements that make up the stars also reside within our own bodies. We are all citizens of the universe. And for me personally, I think that's something that's pretty cool to think about, as well as something to be proud of. So, the next time you find yourself gazing up at the night sky, always remember, you are star material. Hey everybody, so unfortunately I had to cut my imaging session rather short tonight because M15 recently dove behind some trees. So I was only able to capture about an hour and some change of data tonight. And putting that together with what I did last Sunday, that should only give me only a couple of hours of data for this subject. So. Unfortunately, I 
didn't reach my goal for this session. However, with this object now crossed off my list, I've now officially photographed every category of deep space objects. So I think that's pretty cool. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll have opportunities in the future to improve on this subject. So I'm still quite pleased to have been able to get to this point so far. Now, all that's left for me to do is to shoot my calibration frames, then I'll pack everything up, go home, and get ready to start a new day tomorrow. So, as always, thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy the image of Messier 15 at the end of this video. And until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies.